So I, I kind of look at it that way. If they say no, so what do you specialize in? Warehousing, warehouses or, or raw land. Who do you know is the next question. Who do you know? And then it'll be generally someone who's pretty specialized in multifamily. Hello, everybody. This is Gino Barbaro, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily maven, the coach, the pilot, the property manager, Bill Ham. Bill, how you doing today, bro? I'm doing good. How you doing, Gino? I'm doing good. Today's guest is, uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun on this show because I love bringing on students, people who are using coaching, who are getting educated and taking massive action. So it's going to be awesome. So Bill, what's going on in your world? What, what have you been up to? Well, I'm, I've been doing good in uh, working the business, uh, just like everybody else. I, I sold off la- uh, most of my portfolio over the last uh, six months. So I'm right there, right along with all the students, looking at deals, analyzing deals, uh, crunching numbers, doing the, the not so sexy part of the business, but the part of the business that makes the most amount of money, which is so, uh, finding deals. I love that. Bill and I are always talking about goals and setting goals. It's a big battle between me and him. And don't <laughs> fall in love with the goal or the outcome. Fall in love with Bill is talking about. Fall in love with the system of awesome. actually getting out there, doing the grinding work, calling the brokers, networking, analyzing deals, identify as a multifamily investor. That's what you need to do. Um, And on today's show, I think, you know, Nelson Zambrano, uh, this is a perfect example. He's a former VP of a Lloyd's of London broker handling special risk insurance in Latin America, commonly known as kidnap and ransom insurance. Hmm. He's also a former Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, being recalled to active duty after 9-11. He has served in infantry, special forces, and military intelligence units in the Middle East, Latin America, and the Caribbean. He has presently under contract 297 housing units in Valdosta, Georgia, effectively giving them control of the entire Class A student housing units for Valdosta State University. Without further ado, Nelson, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Okay, um, Gino, I am doing great, and, and thank you very much for asking, and thank you for having me as a guest on your show. Well, let's, let's unpack the story. First of all, how did you get into real estate? Why real estate? Um, my family, we are uh, immigrants. Uh, you know, we're from South America. My family is from Colombia. And uh, it's always been part of that kind of American dream, something that my father wanted to follow up on uh, that he wanted to do. And, and, but he never quite got around to do it. So it's one of those kind of, you know, he didn't follow up on that dream. And I decided I would. Um, another big thing that happened is um, during my time in the corporate world, um, I had received an offer from a company. It was a great offer, but I turned it down. My company was bought out by another company. I went back to the original company and they said, we're going to give you the same offer, but a substantially less amount of money. And, um, and it was this kind of attitude of, we've got you over a barrel. We know that that position doesn't exist anymore. And I told them, I said, just because I don't have a job doesn't mean I don't have an income. And I hung up the phone and six hours later, lo and behold, I had a much better offer. I couldn't have said that if I didn't have some rental income coming in. I, you know, I love that story because it's all about negotiation, right? Never split the difference. That's, that's the first actual piece of content on here. Um, that's in real estate and that's in life. I, I love that story, Nelson. So let me ask you, how did you guys, uh, Bill and, and uh, you meet? Well, we, um, we went through we, another, another group uh, just out networking in general and, and Nelson's been uh, a student of mine for for quite some time now Nelson couple well, friend first I think student uh, second certainly and, and what about a year year and a half or so Nelson, what would you say two years year and a half yeah it, it's yeah it's it's been a while um, I mean I can actually say that uh, Bill has uh, coached me through and maintained my level and increased it uh, even during deployments too so uh, he, he's a coach in every sense of the word. So let me ask you a couple of things. What do you think uh, stands out when you look at coaching? What is like the most important thing? See, for me, coaching is all about accountability. It's all about, you know, what are the next steps? What do you see in a coach that makes a coach a, a really important team member? Well, you see the key word team member. Um, but to me, a coach, and you mentioned it earlier, a coach is part of a system. Um, I, I don't believe that by doing things on a, one on your own or on my own, it, that's the kiss of death. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a great thing to say I'm independent and I'll do it on my own. 
but uh, usually those individuals, they fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. uh, a coach can help a person, and I'll throw myself, I mean, my background, I was kind of, my ego got ahead of myself. Hey, I have special operations, special forces, Lloyd of London. Um, and when it came here, um, the cement tasted the same. Bam. <laughs> um, so coaching helps me avoid minefields. Uh, and it helps me get into situations and circumstances that I could not have gotten into on my own. It, it, make, it helps make you those big, huge leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, why did you choose multifamily out of all the niches in real estate? Um, well, for the, you know what? I just thought about this, and this is something kind of going back to coaching before I go to that. I, I look at coaching and systems. Uh, we've all seen that movie, The Matrix, mm -hmm. where they would find themselves in these incredible situations of, where they look like they had no way of getting out of it or they had to accomplish a mission. And at some key point, they would reach back to their coach and say, download how to do something to me. And it would happen immediately. And they would be able to prevail, so to speak. Uh, I look at coaching and systems very similar. That's about the closest thing I have to having that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know who's Morpheus here and, 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 who's, um, and, and who's Neo. Uh, all I know is that uh, I'm moving forward uh, in, in this process. Uh -huh. I love that. So, um, and uh, as far as multifamily, I saw it as the area that could give me the most return for the least amount of risk, taking into account putting my feet on the ground. Um, a lot of people, uh, take for example, I live in Miami, and the sexiest word in South Florida is to say you're a developer. Okay. It's a, it's a super sexy word. The, the concept of Lamborghini shows up and, and private jets. Uh, but the reality is it doesn't quite work out that way. And um, that path has a lot of tombstones, I guess you could say. Uh, versus multifamily, it's one of the few where you can go and tell an investor, I can tell an investor, Mr. Jones, in three months, you're going to get a check. Okay, especially if it's a value add. Mr. Jones, you're going to get a check in three months or two months or whatever, or whatever, however we're structuring the deal. So it's it, uh, the greatest amount of return, least amount of risk. Mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, that, that's really the, the, the bottom line on that. So Bill, you are the coach. Let's walk through the process. How did you uh, start coaching Nelson? What were the first things that you started working on with him as far as uh, when, you, when you started with him? Well, the, the first thing that I started working on Nelson, as he's already pointed out, is, is setting up our systems for the basics of, of the business. And that is uh, deal flow. I mean, that's number one. And anybody that's worked with me knows our first call is based on two things. One, let's, let's find an area. we got to pick a market. So I worked with Nelson and said, okay, you're in South Florida. That's an expensive area. Maybe it's the right market. Maybe it's not for you. You know, there's some, some areas in the, in the country that um, – Pricing is very prohibitive. Miami is basically one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and so we said, let's, let's look at a, figure out a market that's the right fit for you. And the next step was deal flow. Let's set up some systems to start getting uh, deal flow coming in. Uh, you know, and, and that was sort of the first thing that I taught Nelson. The second thing I taught Nelson, um, as, you've, as Nelson's already mentioned, you mentioned, he, he came out of a very structured environment, which was the military, which basically translates into a job. So Nelson had recently quit the job to go into multifamily full time. And I've been teaching for a long time. And something that I noticed is when someone comes out of a very structured scenario, such as a job, into becoming an entrepreneur, they immediately go into a honeymoon phase of enjoying themselves. Gino, you, you probably can relate. You know, the day you walked away from the, from the pizzeria, you immediately jumped into a 40-hour week of, of looking at real estate. Probably not. You probably enjoyed yourself for a little while, relaxed. And that's fine. That's great. But as I told Nelson, it's, Nelson had recently uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, which is a, a huge accomplishment on his part. But the conversation we had was, you know, Mount Kilimanjaro doesn't close properties. Tuesday afternoon closes properties. So let's, let's you know, let's get off the honeymoon. Let's get back to work. And, and you know, a lot of multifamily and real estate is not always an exciting business. It's sitting at a computer, analyzing numbers, looking at deals, and, and that takes discipline. And so my point to Nelson was, okay, honeymoon's over. Let's get to work. Uh, you know, I, I believe it was literally a Tuesday afternoon when we had the call, but I basically told him, 
Now it's time to start grinding and to start uh, applying the systems. And, and Nelson, after that phone call, what happened? Um, it, it, it was it was very surreal. I, I have to admit, it's very surreal. We had the conversation. I mean, I remember like it was yesterday, and we talked about Tuesday afternoon um, and the kind of the reality of things, the actual reality of things. And to me, the Tuesday afternoons have a similarity with Mount Kilimanjaro. And what changed for me was uh, demeanor and intention, uh, intention of doing things. That even though a few weeks passed, it seemed like it was it was that quick where um where we had that property in the contract so, so it was a question of talk we had a conversation about focusing and within several weeks of you focusing you had a property in a contract so now I, let me jump in real quick on that point would you have gotten that pro contract without a coach giving you the intention making you identify as a multifamily investor and focusing on it do you think you would have gotten the contract a, a deal that quickly no no um and i know People may say the world of possibilities and probabilities. Is it possible? Anything is possible, but the probability would be really at the bottom end of that of that curve. Um, and I'll tell you, it basically went from uh, four plexes to something close to 300 units. So we're looking at a people talk about being 10x, right? Um, I actually did the calculation uh, this morning. This is a 75x growth. Okay. So we're talking like a space shuttle taking off or a rocket ship um, without a coach. No, there, there's no way. Let's, I'm, I'm just going to be realistic with myself. Even though I want to pat myself on the back. Uh, no, no, there, there's, there's no way it would have happened. Well, and then tell us about the process. Now you're under contract. This is the kind of thing that I think most people want and then are terrified of actually happening. You know, I don't know how many times I talk to somebody, they, they, they put the line in the water, but they're very afraid to actually catch a deal, you know, because they have that, what if they say yes? Oh my gosh, what if I get to the, what am I going to do if all of a sudden I've got a, a 300 unit apartment complex under contract? Well, one, that's, that's where the coach continues to provide support. So why don't you, Nelson, why don't you kind of walk us through some of that process? First of all, I know everybody listening wants to know, how'd you find the deal? You're, you're in Miami and this deal is in South Georgia. It's a long way away from you physically. How'd you find the deal? Um, the, the first thing is just like we talked about earlier, um, we, we looked at our kind of goals or, and or systems. Uh, it, is it a place that I could, I mean, did the research, emerging market, we, we did all that part. And then to look at, is it a place that I could go in and actually penetrate that market? Uh, how much time could I spend in it? Would I be able to really dig down deep into it? Uh, and then I made a commitment that I would talk to each and every broker in that specific geographical market. I would talk to them some way, shape, form, or manner. When I went to visit that area, we would meet for coffee, some way, shape, form, or manner. Um, kind of a little bit from my military background, I have a dossier. You could almost say on each one of them what they like, what they don't like. Uh, I made a commitment that I was going to penetrate that market. Um, having said that, the Tuesday afternoon talk was where it really got me over the line, so to speak. Because I'd get to the line, I'd look over and I'd say, whoa, that's kind of, that, that, that's, you know, if you fall, you know, there's no parachute here, right? Um, but the Tuesday afternoon talk gave me that focus of intention. Um, it, it really changed um, a, a lot of things for me. So, so the short answer here is you identified a market, you just penetrated the market through reaching out and contacting realtors. That's basically the short answer, correct? Uh, realtors and building up a team around. So um, I, I wanted to let everyone know Nelson is serious. Nelson is a real player in this thing. Right. But okay. look, what Nelson has done is not anything that can be easily replicated by anyone on the call. Nelson didn't do anything magical. You know, Nelson didn't do anything that isn't done or can't be done by me or Gina or anybody on the call. You know, he just applied himself, he just made it happen. He just picked up the phone on Tuesday afternoon and called some realtors. There's no, there's no, nothing secret. It's nothing magic. He just took our systems that Jake and Gina know have out there, applied the systems and, and got a good result with, with an average application of a system. So I wouldn't say you did anything way over the top or anything that anybody else can't do. Would you agree? Yeah, the, I, I wholeheartedly agree. The biggest thing that I did is I got out of my own way. 
Okay. Good I, I basically, I got out of my own way. Um, I, I did not negotiate with myself. Okay. Uh, which, which I've done before in the past. And, and I have a, I have a great coach that who is smart enough to know Nelson, you're negotiating with yourself. Um, and you're splitting the difference with yourself and it just is not going to work out in your favor. So I chose to not do that. Uh, hence Tuesday afternoon. And it's, it's, again, it seems like it was this quick. It was actually physically longer than that, but to getting that uh, deal on the contract. Good. All right. So you've got the deal under contract now. What is the next step for you? Uh, you're, you're obviously in a due diligence phase. You've got to go look at the property. You know, how's your team? Do you have your partners together? How about money? Where's, how are you going to pay for this thing? You know, kind of walk us through your structure and your thinking about this particular project. Um, and, and I'll go ahead and say, you know, Nelson has signed a confidentiality agreement, so we're not going to violate some certain, uh, you know, pieces of information. But generally speaking, Nelson, you know, what, what's the next step and uh, where, where are you at with the process? Well, it's the next couple of steps. And again, this goes back to a series of Tuesday afternoons, um, you know, bringing on board sponsors, partners, uh, money raises, due diligence. So this is not something that um, we can be like Atlas, you know, the, the picture of Atlas, the guy who's carrying the world. Um, that that quite, doesn't quite apply here. And maybe in movies and in romance, not in adventure novels, that applies. But that doesn't here. So I made sure I have sponsors and partners on board. Um, and they can do some of the financial heavy lifting as well. Um, on my own, I'm also raising capital as well. Um, due diligence team has come in, work. We do our own first due diligence, and then we bring in another uh, another set of eyes, so to speak. So that definitely helps out. Uh, and again, all of this is part of a system. Um, and there's things that I say to myself, I would have never thought about that. I would have I would have missed out on that. That also helps out when dealing with sellers and brokers, because they say to themselves, "This guy's for real. He, he's got people and backing behind him." He knows what to say. Again, I go back to the example of the Matrix. Okay, uh, Neo couldn't get in and get out of those situations and prevail without that whole coach system uh, all the way behind him. So it, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. and, and sponsors, let me, since you've used that term, let's clarify for everybody on the call. Um, when, when we use the word sponsor, that means someone that is going to help guarantee the mortgage. Basically, the, the balance sheet partner is going to bring in the net worth, the balance sheet that allows us to qualify for the mortgage. Um, you know, as most of you listening probably know, you have to have sort of net worth equal to or greater than the loan amount to qualify for a loan. So, so Nelson didn't personally alone have enough net worth. He just went out and found a few partners, came together. Now he's built the team that qualifies for the mortgage to do this kind of deal. Nelson, tell me, how did you, how did you meet some of your sponsors and, and how, what are you doing to raise money? you know, without letting out too much of the secret, what, what is your just general system for, for meeting and networking and raising money? Um, for networking, I try to, not I try, I am in places where I know high probability of meeting these folks. And it kind of goes back to our other conversations. Again, um, I think our most memorable conversations we go with on mindset and um, we're the reflection of the five closest people around us. So I, I made sure I wanted to be in an environment where I would, meet those kinds of individuals. Okay. okay. Well, I would meet them. Uh, we have commonality and, um, and they got to see me interact on a regular basis. Uh, a lot of times in between deployments. So, um, so that was a great place to be able to meet, um, uh, sponsors events. Um, you know, Jake and Gino have events too. These are the kinds of places that are a great place to meet, um, sponsors, people of this type. Yep. Um, so that, that, that's where I would go out. Uh, and as far as raising capital, I kind of look at it as a, as a two prong approach. One is uh, working with um, equity groups and also with high net worth, ultra high net worth individuals, starting them off with a smaller amount. And they, because that gives them peace of mind. They get to see, they get to know me better. They get to know the team better. And then we can start to look at larger amounts. Okay. So are you raising money from any complete strangers? Is, is anybody you don't know basically giving you money that you did not have any sort of relationship? You didn't know them. You just sort of raised money from strangers. Has that occurred yet? 
Uh, no, no. There's always some type of a pre-existing relationship uh, right. where people get to know you and you get to know them. Um, and this is something that um, I've heard of the places I heard from you. Uh, we're going to be married to these folks for the next couple of years. We are, basically. <laughs> and, right. uh, we're we're going to end. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's why I asked that question is, is look, you're not raising mm-hmm. from strangers. You're building relationships that pay off later on. And the point is once you have a deal under contract, if you think you're going to go out and, and establish those relationships in that amount of time that it takes to close, you are sadly mistaken. Those relationships must be put in place long before you identify a deal. And I'm not even talking about anything legal or SEC or anything like that. I'm just talking about reality. You got to get to know these people. It's very unlikely that you're going to meet someone in the next few minutes. They're going to hand you a check for you know a hundred grand or fifty. It's unlikely. It's Bill, how do you how do you convince uh, students to do that? Because we actually interviewed Vinny Chopra again, uh, and he said the same thing. He's got 187 investors. He just sold off, and he netted 14 million dollars in the last year alone. Um, he's only met 26 of them because he's got so. He said 26 belly to belly, which means the other 160 are referrals. How do you convince students? Listen, you've got to start, and, and how do they, we, we create a credibility book, but how do you get them over that hump to say, let's talk about an opportunity. What do you say to them to say, forget about the deal. Let's start creating these substantive relationships today. How do you get them over the hump? Me personally, I'm always talking real estate. I'm, I'm always excited and I'm always enthusiastic about real estate. So number one, everybody knows what I do. Um, you know, in, in by the time I come across the deal, I've been talking to these people long enough but I've gotten them excited. So they're, they're kind of waiting on me to find the deal mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and through that conversation and getting to know them. So one, they, they know me, they trust me. That's wonderful. Now they're excited about real estate specifically. That's better. And that's what I've been doing over time. It's what Nelson's been doing. And that's what I was kind of asking those questions because I, I know what he's out doing. He's not raising money from strangers. He's raising money from people that have established relationships with um, Vinny Chopra and other people also have a very large online presence, as do you, uh, Jake and Gina, with your podcast. And that is also a great system and a way that you can raise money from people you have less of a relationship with. But if you don't have that kind of big online platform, which most of us, I myself, do not have, then, then that's, a, that's advice you have to take with somewhat of a grain of salt to make sure that that's a replicable system for you. So if any chopper says, Hey, I raised money from 160 people I never met. That's great. Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't have the online system that he has or that you and, and uh, Jake have, then the answer to that is no. And you better just be a normal person and go out there and do what Nelson is doing. What I'm doing is get in rooms and meet people, just shake hands, meet people and just plain old get to know them. There's more business done at the bar after the event than ever in, in the actual room itself. That's where the money's made is in those late night uh, dinners and drinks and just get to know people. That's, that's where it's at. And that's what else to do it. And everybody can do that is my point in saying this. Mm-hmm. Great. I love that. Yeah. Just, just uh, something to mention. One of the things that I do um, and, and a, a lot of people, they, they think this is old fashioned and shouldn't be done or, Hey, is there an app for that? Every person that I meet uh, at an event, even if it's on a plane, uh, traveling, um, I send them a handwritten card. So it doesn't matter where they're at. Uh, I just got back from Italy. I sent out 14 handwritten cards before I left Italy. There you um, go. The people that I met. So, I mean, if I meet you, you're going to get a handwritten card. And I'll Hey, it was a pleasure meeting you. I mentioned it, and it is, and unfortunately, my handwriting looks like it's it's definitely handwritten. It's not calligraphy. Mm -hmm. So, so your point there, Nelson, is follow up, and that's an extremely important point in networking. Too many times have I seen people think they have a network because they have a stack of business cards, and I have been one of those. And let me tell you, a stack of business cards does not mean you have a network. I can go around and gather business cards all day long. So what? If I'm not following up with them, if I'm not establishing that relationship, I lost $150,000 once because I thought a stack of business cards meant network meant I could just raise money. I'll just buy a stack of business cards and give everybody a call and it'll rain. I was wrong. It didn't. I, I lost a deal and I lost $150,000 in earnest money because I made the mistake of thinking business cards mean relationships. They do not. Do what Nelson's doing. Follow up. You don't have to do a handwritten card, but follow up, follow up, follow up. That's tremendous. Good advice, Nelson. 
I love that. So where are you at the process right now? You're doing due diligence. Uh, how much longer before you close? When's the close date on it? Um, well, we're looking at closing in, in approximately 60 days. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any obstacles? So tell us about the realtor. So let's let's talk about that, Nelson, because I know a, a lot of our students have, have had uh, some good and some some bad luck with with working with realtors. So this particular individual, the first time he picked up the phone, she, I'm assuming it's a man. He she picked up the phone and said, "Hello, what what did you say? Hi, I'm Nelson. Go. I mean, what was your conversation like?" Um, the, again, I go back to the first thing is, uh, I get myself into the mindset that, um, this is in a way a numbers game and, uh, a very specific type of numbers game. And, um, so part of it is I'm looking for people that want to do business and, and the conversation is very important that our credibility comes through. Um, there is a, I, I, I you know, I use a script. Uh, okay. My ego does not get to the point. I actually script it out. I want to take the most emotion, as much Nelson out of it as possible. And I want to put the great, the Tuesday afternoon aspect of it in as well. My, my, my intention of it. Um, so I'm talking to the broker. I, I keep the conversation short, brief. Why? Because important people are brief and to the point. They don't have a lot of time for chit chat. Um, so I'm qualifying them. They know that I'm qualifying them. They're qualifying me. Um, if they have something for me to take a look at, that's great. I tell them, yeah. Um, and I explain to them that I'm here for the long term. Uh, I'll always try to drop one or two things I know about that particular market, geographic market that a novice wouldn't know, let's say, okay. Where they say, Hmm, this guy, he's been here before. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. They don't know, but in their mind, I need to take his, I need to take his follow up call. Um, and then I put them on a rotation system to be continually talking to them. Um, if they send me or when they send me a deal, I look at it and I tell them why it doesn't work for me and that this is a normal part of the process. So I kind of put them in a follow on of a process of elimination. Um, but it's right, so, let's here. So, so let's, let's go less 10,000 foot here. Did, did they ask you for proof of fun? When you first contacted the person and they said, Nelson, what are you looking for? You know, what was your sort of response? I mean, did you say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a great deal? Did you say, hey, I'm looking for a property with tons of cash flow? I mean, what was your response when they said, Nelson, what is it that you want? Because you hit on something real important, but then move past it. Is we have a very short time in which to gain credibility with the realtor. And the way I find that is to have a very concise answer as to what it is you're looking for. If you have a, a dumb answer to what you're looking for, you're going to get a dumb response. If you have a good answer. So what was your answer to what are you looking for, Nelson? What do you want? Why did you call me? Yeah, my, my answer is I'm generally qualifying them. So I'll, I'll ask them, so, um, so you're working in multifamily? And that's a yes or a no. In general, they'll say yes. Um, the ones that say no, um, that's actually, I like that for the ones that say no, because they might be so specialized that anyone they refer me to is highly specialized in multifamily. I mean, they're at the point that they're not trying to grab everything. So I, I kind of look at it that way. If they say no, so what do you specialize in? Warehousing, warehouses or, or raw land. Who do you know is the next question. Who do you know? And then it'll be generally someone who's pretty specialized in multifamily. And I'll always ask him, is it okay if I use your name? And they like that. They say, oh, you know, this guy, he's, he's, he's not into taking all the honey for himself, so to speak. Um, okay. and, then, and then when we go from there, it's, I'll ask him, you special in multifamily? Yes. What type of properties? So I get them to qualify themselves. And this is, what are you looking for? And then I'll bullet point it out. 100 to 500 units, B and C type of property. I just bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. Excellent. It's not a long... And if they don't understand the language I'm talking about, they're starting to disqualify themselves. Good point. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you know exactly what you're looking for. You, you've already mentioned you have a little script and you have what you're looking for written down on a cheat sheet. That is exactly what I did when I got started. You know, I, I wrote down on a piece of paper specifically what I'm looking for, cap rate, price, size, asset class. 
so that I could do exactly what you did. And then the realtor says, hey, Bill, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for boom, 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 boom. And I, and I dial it down and then they know they're talking to a player. That's one of the best ways to stop a realtor from asking you for proof of funds too early in the conversation. Did this particular agent ask you for proof of funds uh, in this deal prior to going to contract? No. And um, I've, I've actually I've never had, I think maybe once or twice I had someone ask me for proof of funds. Good point. Neither have uh, I. Neither have I. No one's ever asked me either. Yeah. And, and it is, it's a, it's a non issue, non conversation. Um, yeah. I mean, I, why do you I mean, I have to really think really hard, but no. Why, why is no one asking you for proof of funds? I'll tell you why, but I want to I hear why you think that's the case. First of all, I think I've made it past their first or second barriers of credibility. Exactly. And that first credibility is proof of funds and then people get all flustered. So I've made it way past that uh, way to the point where it's like, let's have a real conversation. Let's have a real conversation. Um, and I go back into the part about the coach. We, it's very easy to get stuck on something like a proof of funds without a coach. Um, because I want to, I want to get into those inner circle conversations. Okay. Yeah. I want to get into the conversation where this broker is talking to someone and the someone says, Hey, I'm, I'm considering selling my property. Who do you know? And I want in the top of their mind, one of the top three names to be Nelson. Exactly. So, so with, with the takeaway here sounds to me, and, and Gino jumping on this, it sounds to me like um, your, your coach and coaching and your systems gave you a level of confidence, allowed you to reach out to this realtor confidently, and that confidence translated, and therefore in their mind, they, they never really thought, wait a minute, is Nelson for real or not? Let me ask about proof of funds. They immediately, through your tone and demeanor and confidence, assumed they're talking to a, a real player, and proof of funds never even came up. Guess what? Never comes up with me either because I translate that same level of confidence because I had a coach. So that's what I'm hearing is that you, through your studying, have, have made uh, yourself sound credible, and then people kind of take you as that. Don't, don't hit you for proof of funds. Education and, and what are you looking for? is probably the biggest hedge against being asked for proof of funds. If you've got a concise answer, what are you looking for? That's about 80, 85% of the way. And, and Jake, and, uh, if he was here, he would, he would actually say and follow up, you're the one selling the broker too. You're telling the broker, I'm a closer. I know what I have. I've got my team built out. This is what I'm looking for. If you're specific, and we use a credibility book. On our third deal, we had 136 units. Uh, we only had 60 units. We slid the credibility book over to the banker. It had our deals in there. It had our business plan. It had uh, all the actions, what was going on in the Knoxville market. As far as unemployment, job growth, it had our plan of how we we're going to return our money to our investors. It was all laid out in the credibility book. And he actually said, well, I've never seen this before. It was really concise, 10 to 12 pages. Like Nelson said, these guys are busy. You don't need everything going on. You need some nice pictures, some nice graphics. So maybe a case study in there saying, this is what I've done. And if you don't have any deals, it doesn't matter. You don't need deals. We've got students who've been doing these without any deals. It looks so professional because you know, you're laying out your business plan and that's what these guys want. And you're prepared more than anything. Most real estate investors, unfortunately, especially coming from the single family home space, they're not prepared. They're, they don't have a plan. They're just going in their guns blazing and they sound foolish. That, that's, that's what it comes down to. So if you're prepared and you can be able to speak intelligently to the broker, I think that's, that's important. I mean, what do you think, Bill? I, I think that's absolutely. And that's, that's what I've been, is what I'm zeroing in on this conversation because this is something I've worked with Nelson and, and almost all of my students is, is how to, uh, initiate that conversation with realtors and that's that's the value in a system and working with someone that's already been there and done it is that we know it works and we know it doesn't work mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I translate to a lot of my students is how do we gain traction uh, it's like I say you know a lot of times you only get one bite at that apple let's make it a good one uh, <laughs> no because you're only you might that a realtor might remember you the next time you call and you you've been saying dumb stuff but, or you don't know your market, or, or you, you throw out prices or cap rates that are reasonable for the area, you lose credibility. 
you know, give you an example, Atlanta right now. The average cap rate in Atlanta for a C-class asset is like five and a half. I mean, it's really low. But if I called up a realtor in Atlanta and said, oh, I'm looking for C-class assets, you know, around seven and a half cap rate, conversation's over on the spot. I don't know my market. I don't know the area. I don't know the asset class. And the realtor's not going to be rude. He's just going to check, put a little check by my name. And that's going to be the last time he takes that phone call. <laughs> so that's what we got to kind of make sure we know the markets, we, we know our product, and we know ourselves. And that's what we do uh, here at Jake Gino and WilburyProfits.com is to teach those students how to do just that, like Nelson, so that uh, you wind up with a, you know, almost 300 unit deal under, under contract. Mm -hmm. Guys, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. Gino, I know a lot of the listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. I know you've been hard at work helping Jake and Gino students do just that using our framework. GDAD, explain to the listeners how they can get our help. Guys, we've been hard at work growing our community of like-minded investors, and the results of our members has been nothing short of incredible. We're looking to grow this amazing group of investors. What we're looking for is those that want to follow our proprietary framework we've created. Buy right, manage right, and finance right. Leverage our connections, education, and mentorship as ways to take your business to the next level. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become a part of this amazing community, apply to work with us at jakeandgino.com forward slash apply. All right, we're back. Um, I've got, Bill, I can spend the next 10 minutes uh, just going through this entire uh, thing. I've got a lot of action steps here, but do you have anything, any other questions you want to ask Nelson before I dive into any action steps here? The only other question I have is one that, that I get asked a lot, and, and it's sort of on something we've already covered, but I want to reiterate. Nelson, you know, there is a ton of information online. There's videos, there's books, there's websites and podcasts. Why in the world would I spend money on a coach or on education. Why don't I just sit in my office and watch the podcasts and, and read the books and read the posts and, and get this information on my own? I don't need a coach. I don't, I don't need you. I don't need any of these people. I'll just, I'll just do it all on my own with this information that's readily available. Why don't I just take that path? Why didn't you personally just immerse yourself in your own education and, and not spend a penny? Why, why did you choose to go a different route? Um, well, I guess the first thing is you get what you invest, right? Um, the, all, all of the free, free out there information, uh, it hasn't been vetted. Some of it is actually very good, but there is no vetting process. There is no vetting system. So is it, is it applicable? When can I apply it? Should I apply it? Um, so there is no vetting system. The second thing is, you know, how, how do I apply it? It's just, it's just information that I can't translate necessarily into knowledge followed by application. Um, is it actionable? How can I action upon it? Um, so you, you, you know, we have all, all of those things that come into place. Um, I look at it, my military background, uh, I was in some very elite units, the top, top units in the world, I would say. We would still hire and I would fight to, we would bring in top ranked civilian shooting coaches. And people would say, guys, you guys are special forces. And I was in joint units where it was SEALs, Army Rangers, Army Special Forces guys, Power Rescue. And we would still go out and look for top civilian shooters to mm -hmm. teach us how to shoot better. Even though we're among the tops in the world, we would still hire top coaches in key specific areas. And, uh, and shooting was one of them. And it became really apparent when we would go on shoot offs against them, it was kind of humbling at times. Um, <laughs> So I'm sure some of my friends from that community say, Nelson, don't tell people that. They, they, they think we walk on water. Um, but um, but, but more, more. Yeah, so it's, it's the application. The other thing is, is when we really look at this, we're, we're buying businesses. We're creating businesses that are actually up and running. And it's, it's like I'm going to jump into a plane that's flying, and I've never flown before. I have to have this coach next to me. Right. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're, we're buying businesses that are up and running and we want to make them even more profitable. Okay. And if you think about it, a value add, the plane's actually kind of doing this in a way. So a plane that's doing this and I'm not, which my hand, in case you can't see me, my hand is going down as if in a plane, the plane might crash. I'm buying this one and I'm going to buy this plane, this business without an experienced pilot slash coach next to me. 
Oh, I'll, I'll watch some YouTube videos on the way down. Uh, no, I, I don't think that quite works. <laughs> That's a great example. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, you can learn the other thing, plans by watching videos. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is about a coach, just like you mentioned, gives you confidence, but not just with the brokers, but again, the whole panorama. When I talk to my sponsors, when I talk to my equity partners, they want to know, okay, what have you done? And slash, what have you invested in yourself? Okay. So you're, that, that's a whole... Mm -hmm. No, no, wait. So you're, you're using your, your coach and your coaching almost as your credibility leverage there. So you're going out to your partners, to your equity investors, which we know people do business for two reasons. One, they, they like you and they trust you. Like you, I can't help you with. Trust you as far as business, I can definitely help you with. So what you're saying is that you, you've been able to get partners and, and sponsors and money raisers and all that based on your education, based on your experience, which coaching has been a portion of. So you're actually leveraging the money you've invested in your education to be able to go out and even raise money and find partners. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I look at a coach as if um, I'm running a, a Fortune 500 business or I have a startup. And how, wh how would I treat my board of directors? Um, I, I send questions ahead of time to my, I mean, you know, I send questions to you ahead of time. Um, hey, this is why, and very specific questions per, I mean, I'm getting into more maybe technicalities, but it's the value that I have on, on coaching and on a system. Again, it's like the matrix. Um, they're in a jam, they don't say, uh, I'm on the top of a building, um, teach me how to ride a motorcycle. No, I need to know how to fly a helicopter. It's very specific. That's what's going to get me out of here and into the next situation where I need to be in. So, so that, that's how I, I treat it. It's an all encompassing system that I use to, to even, to even things out. Mm -hmm. It's like a secret weapon that I use. So I, I've taken a ton of notes, Bill. So you're just going to give me a minute or two to go through all this because, um, <clears throat> I mean, he's laid out the whole plan, really. I mean, seriously, the whole plan is laid out here. So for this is all actionable. Um, take out your pen and paper. Um, if you want to start, the first thing is you need to invest in your education. And that's what it come, comes down to me because me in the beginning, I lost a lot of money on mobile home parks and I lost a lot of money on a strip mall that I had no business doing because I was not educated. That's what prompted me to educate myself with multifamily. So if you, A, want to dramatically shorten your learning curve and B, as Nelson said, you want a higher probability of success, I think you have to look into some type of education. That's the first thing. Um, and as Nelson laid out and Bill laid out so nicely, let's talk about what you need to start. Education is the first start. The next thing Nelson talked about an emerging market. Emerging markets are really good. How do you know about emerging markets or market research or what Bill loves to talk about market cycles? It's from getting educated. You need to learn that. Pick the market. The next thing Bill talks about is deal flow. Deal flow is very important. I, I know Bill intimately, it's the 80 deals. If you're not, if you're underwriting two deals a week, it's going to take you 40 weeks to find a deal, right, Bill? I see you smiling because okay. you, you look at it. You want to underwrite right. 10 deals a week, it's going to take you eight weeks. It's just a numbers game like Nelson said. Number three, the honeymoon phase. You should enjoy yourself for a week or two weeks or three weeks, but get back on the horse because you need to get back on because you're starting something differently. It's entrepreneurship is, is awesome. It's amazing. I'm working every single day. If you don't let the honeymoon phase last too long, you're going to go back to corporate, right? <clears throat> Number four, identify. You have to identify yourself as a multifamily investor. Nelson said you have to have intention. What's your intention? Figure out what your intention is. Uh, I liked what Nelson talked about as far as gifting. Um, and being thank you, everyone needs to, after this recording to listen to our podcast with John Rulin on giftology. Amazing way to build rapport. You'd think you'd be silly on how to gift to a broker and how, or how to build rapport. That podcast had so much content there. Uh, you don't give people gifts during the holidays. You give them gifts whenever they don't expect it or, or just be really kind to somebody. Gifting and uh, building rapport with somebody is really important. And I've got a few quotes here that I just wrote down that I love. Number one, you only get one bite at that apple. <laughs> that, that I didn't make that up, by the way. <laughs> Dude, I like, I'm thinking of Snow White. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm hey, thinking of. That apple. Apple. That's right. <laughs> My kids can <laughs> You know, let's get a good one. And how do you get a good one? You get a good one by going to Jake and Gino, having those 45 questions with the broker, having the four-step questionnaire when, you, when you're underwriting a deal, knowing what questions to ask. And it might take the first three or four months before you get it, but have those scripts in front of you. Like Nelson said, use those scripts. Um, also, you get what you invest. Don't think of 
education or coaching as a cost. It's an investment in yourself. And I went to life coaching school. I spent, I'm going to tell you, I spent 10 grand, the best $10,000 I ever spent in my entire life because it gave me clarity. Coaching and education will give you clarity. And that's what we're all looking for because we don't stop and think sometimes why multifamily, you need clarity and clarity on the deal, clarity on the market, clarity on what your next steps are. That's what coaching gives you. That's so powerful. Clarity and accountability are the two pieces that education and coaching will give you. As you can tell, Bill, I'm really fired up. I love talking. They're good, good. I, I, I keep talking You're about good. it. <laughs> I, I like the plane crashings. I've talked to Bill before. Bill's been in a couple of those hairy situations. You don't want to actually, um, you don't want to actually get in that situation and say, okay, let me pull the YouTube. You want to be able to get on the phone with somebody and say, hey, listen, let's deal review this. I've got a hot deal. And that's the thing with multifamily and real estate. You need to be responsive. Like Bill says, you need to get on a plane this week and go see a deal in Atlanta. You better be able to do that. And if you can't, you better have a team member that can do that. And if you get the deal, let Bill or let your coach take a look at it and then put an offer ASAP. That's what, that's what brokers want. They want you, know, to, you to move your butt. Um, the other thing, uh, a lot of our students are using Jake and Gino as the advisory board on their credibility book or on their websites. And I never even thought of that, Nelson. A lot of students are already doing that. So when you go to a student's website, it'll say advisory board, Jake and Gino, and they're going through our education and they're seeing what our results are. So they have a little more comfort that, hey, you know what? It's almost like going to college when you have a coach because you're spending money on your education and everyone says, I'm going to spend 150 grand on college. But you know what? 10 grand or 15 grand or five grand with a coach, that's, that's crazy. You will learn these skills forever. It's like a recipe. Success leaves clues. Once you learn the recipe on how to identify a market, once you learn the recipe on how to underwrite deals, once you learn the recipe on how to build rapport, find the deals on the finance, it's all about our proprietary framework, buy right, manage right, finance right. Once you learn all three of those, it's like repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So, um, Bill, I could keep going on. Let me think of a couple other things because it's important uh, that once they start, the coach is there to lead them. The coach is there to push them. Um, and I'm just amazed that from a fourplex, to 297 units. That is, that is, that's like, to me, it's almost unheard of. I always tell people to think big, but to start small, just get in the game. If it's a fourplex is all right with you, use a fourplex. That's fine. But then always know that there's other tools out there, syndications out there, refine roles out there, um, you know, uh, owner financings out there. There are other ways of getting into multifamily. So don't let that block you. And you wouldn't know that unless you had a coach, unless you had Bill sitting next to you telling you, listen, the sky's the limit here. It's all what you want. It's all about being clear. You want to hit up uh, any uh, final thoughts, Bill? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. And only one little thing I'll add to it is one of the big objections that people have when they first go out to raise money or find partners is, you've never done this before. Why would I do it with you? And that's a huge objection. And maybe you run into that, Nelson, maybe you haven't. But the, uh, the answer to that is your education. So if you've never done a large deal before, and this is your first rodeo and your first deal, which is all of ours first deal the first times, everybody's first deal once, right? You had better be able to look that investor partner in the eye and say, you know what, you're right. I haven't done this before, but and that's where your education kicks in. And that's where you say, yes, but I have, you know, Wilbur Profits in my corner on the advisory board. I've done this, I've got this education, that education. If you can't say, I've, I've never done the deal before and you can't back it up with education, why would they do business with you? And, and likely, mm -hmm. So education leads to, to action and to success. So education is your sort of almost like your crutch until you have the resume to, to stand on its, on its own. So education leads to resume. Uh, and again, that's your biggest obstacle uh, is that you've never done this before objection and, and education is the, the way you get past that. So Nelson, one tip for you and for all the listeners out there doing their first deal, um, document your entire journey. Uh, it's from day one to day to close. Take pictures. Talk about the whole journey and make it a wonderful story because everyone loves a story. And every now and again, if you're uncomfortable in front of the camera, look, I mean, take a look at my face. I am not, I am not a video dude, right? But I've gotten more comfortable in front of video. Start shooting some YouTube videos. You start. Investors want to be educated, right? And if you can have a story, I mean, you close this 297 units, you're going to have all the money in the world. But if you can 
to go, go to a meetup, talk to people about it, and you have it documented and you say, this is what my journey was from day one to close, and now this is what my journey is going forward. You're going to have all that. That is what that is what led to our success. That's why we, after 200 units, we started documenting everything, and it was like, that's what students wanted. And the fear was, well, who, who's going to listen to us? You got to remember, there's a lot of people out there that haven't even started yet. They're not even getting there. So you can be the example to them, especially a lot of military. We have a lot of military in Jake and Gino, a lot of entrepreneurs out there. They need to look at someone like you and say, well, he did it. How did he do it? And if you can show them how to do it, you can teach them how to do it. You'll have money knocking down. And plus, it's just a great way and it's just a great story. And you never know, two years from now, you can have your own podcast, you can have your own YouTube channel, whatever it is. So just continue to document and take pictures. That's what I wrote. <laughs> you know? So. Well, I, uh, it, and I really appreciate what you're saying for, uh, especially getting in front of the camera. Um, my background, and, and Bill knows it, um, we were kind of an anti-social media presence unit. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my picture would appear and it would be a black line across my face, or it would be, you could tell, you could tell somebody had actually <laughs> put a, a felt tip marker had, had, had blacked out my face. So, um, so this is almost like, um, Maybe it's not politically correct. I'm just like breaking my cherry here on a podcast. <laughs> um, you, but you know what the funny thing is, though? If you can go from four <clears throat> units to 257 units, you can go in front of a camera and just talk. And if you speak from the heart and you talk about your struggles and you talk about your, 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 your triumph and then what's the next steps, you can do that. I guarantee you, you're going to be helping a lot of people out there. So always keep that in mind. Any, any parting thoughts, Bill and Nelson, before we go? Nelson? Um, it, it just the great thing about this is again the coach, the system that uh, this now becomes my new base level of operations, base level of operating, um, and and that that's a big thing. I was thinking about this uh, to to thank Bill, and I guess um, to thank Bill would really be uh, it'll be my my kids and my grandkids that aren't even born yet. <laughs> no, thank yourself. You're the one putting the effort into it. I'm I'm just the book. Uh, You're just reading it. Uh, now this is all mm -hmm. you, Nelson. But so, so you I said. I mean, make. Ma no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh huh. No, it, it's it's almost it's now it's turning into legacy mm -hmm. because th there'll be the additional beneficiaries of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, there's and only so much you can do with a fourplex, but now it's it's turning into almost legacy. Mm -hmm. So this is your new base Thank of you. operations. Meaning, after you close this uh, almost 300 unit deal, you're. You're not buying duplexes anymore. I mean, really? What's what's wrong with duplexes? Uh, uh, years. You don't want to buy duplexes anymore? Uh, like, come on. Uh, as long as they're brownstones in New York City. Ah, right. Yeah. Yeah. About the same price as a 300 units. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Nelson, where can people get a hold of you? Uh, email address, uh, website. Do you have any any place people can get a hold of you? Yeah, the best way to get a hold of me is email on my website. It's um, www.normandygroup.us. Normandy as an invasion of Normandy group dot us. Great. Okay. Uh, and my email address is Nelson at Normandy group dot us. Nelson at Normandy group, N O R M A N D Y group, G R O U P dot us. That's awesome. I just want to thank the both of you for being on. Um, please, if anybody on the show found value, uh, leave us a review. I'd love that. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to reach out to Nelson, you've got his information there. Uh, Bill, shoot out your, your information also if you it's want to reach easy. you. Bill at Phoenix Res Group. So it's B-I-L-L -L at P-H-O-E-N-I-X. R E S G R O U P dot com. Phoenix R E S group. Nothing to do with the city. I just picked that name. I live in Atlanta. Please don't start sending me deals in Phoenix. I get this. Up when somebody, hey, are you buying anything in Arizona? I'm like, no, it's just the name of the company. I'm in Atlanta, by the way. Uh -huh. Phoenix Res group dot com. Uh, Bill of Phoenix Res group. Yeah, yeah, hit me up. Love to talk to you. Thanks, guys. I had a great time in the show. I've actually learned a lot. Follow the roadmap system and inquire about different coaching programs. That there's, there's a ton of them out there. You'll fit with somebody. There's always somebody out there that you're looking for. And once again, guys, have a great day. Thanks for being on the show. And everybody, be well. And Gina and Bill, thank you very much for having me on.